Sunday School Lesson for May 10th, 2015, Lesson 11. We're coming from Unit 3. The title of Unit 3 is One in the Bond of Love. Our lesson title is Unity in Diversity. Our devotional reading is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Our background scripture is 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 11. And our printed text is also 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 11. And our key verse, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Our lesson name as a result of studying this lesson that the students should be able to outline the purpose of spiritual gifts according to 1 Corinthians 12 verses 1 through 11. They should be able to appreciate individual spiritual gifts and the way they are used and thirdly uncover the spiritual gift of the faith community and the way they can be used for its benefits. Unity in diversity. The Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church was in response to serious problems that had arisen in that church. Just as members of the church were guilty of the party spirit which had no place in the church, there was also sexual immorality. They were abusing the, the Lord's Supper. And as addressed in our lesson today, they were also guilty of abusing spiritual gifts in worship rather than using them for the edification of the church. They was using them for self-glory. So we find in our text where we find in, where Paul addresses this situation, we find written in, in verse 1 of our lesson where it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I would not have you ignorant. The Apostle Paul wants them not to be ignorant or misinformed about the origin or use of spiritual gifts. He informed them that they came from God and was to be used for God's glory. We find in verse 2 where he states, You know that ye were Gentiles carried away with these dumb idols even as ye were led. You know that you were Gentiles. Paul reminds them of their former state this church, these members of this church, state that they was Gentiles and that they were carried away to dumb idols, that that they worship idols made of wood, made of stone, that they was dumb idols and, and that they couldn't speak, they couldn't hear, that they couldn't see. They had no power whatsoever, but they was Gentiles. Now, we have to understand that that the, the difference between the Gentiles and the difference between God's peculiar people, the Jews. For the Gentiles, as Gentiles, they was not God's peculiar people. The Jews was his chosen people. Chosen not because he loved them better than, than the rest of mankind, but he distinguished them from the rest of the world by his favor by his favor, unmerited favor to them that that they might have the knowledge of worship of the true God and also were in a manner confined. The rest of the world was strangers to the covenants of promise that God made with the nation Israel. He chose the nation Israel to be a witness, to be a light for him in, in, in this darkened Gentile world and that God gave them the covenants of promises that, that, that the Gentiles, they was 
aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and in a sense, they were without God in the world. We find written in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 13, where it states, Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh. Now we have to remember that the, the circumcision was a sign of a covenant between God and the nation Israel. That they that circumcision was made by hands. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the common wealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ ye who were sometimes that were afar off or made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. So the apostle Paul were, was reminding them of their former state. And a lot of times we as Christians, we need to remember where we came from. Don't get the big head don't don't get to be start gloating about our position, but we need to remember not looking and desiring to go back, but just just remember where you came from, how that it was God that has brought us to the place where you are today and that we did not bring ourselves because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We find in verse 3 where it states, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Wherefore, I give to you to understand. Paul wanted them to get this in their mind and to understand it and to and and to keep it in their understanding. Now the Apostle Paul tells them none can act under the influence nor by the power of the Spirit of God who disown and blaspheme Jesus Christ. Now we live in the society today where we got so many cults where where uh, uh, so called churches where where they, in the sense, they blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ. They they do not recognize him as being God manifested in the flesh. They make him as a lesser God. They do not recognize him as being the only begotten son of God, but he is a son of God. So they are blaspheming the name of Jesus Christ. And that is not of the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God testifies to who Jesus Christ is, that Jesus Christ was very God manifested in the flesh. For the Spirit of God, it bears uncontrollable witness to Jesus Christ by prophecies, by his miracles, and even by his resurrection from the dead. And that no one that no man called Jesus Lord without a believing subjection to him. Many a times we want to say, well, our Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ, but, but in reality, he, he, he is not our Lord. We just give him lip service. We use him for an uh, escapism. We use him as, as an emergency situation Savior. But then for him to be our Lord, we need to be totally dependent upon him and to truly trust him in all situations. And can't nobody do that unless that faith be wrought in them by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. We find in verse 4 of our lesson where it says that there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. There are diversities of gifts, 
we have to understand that spiritual gift, though proceeding from the same spirit, the Holy Spirit, are various. They are different kinds. Men have different gifts. But it is the same spirit that gives them to the body of Christ. It is the Holy Spirit distributing the gifts. They are all not the same. And we see in, in uh, verse 5 where it says that, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Difference of administration. In other words, there are different offices and officers to discharge them, but in, in the different ordinances and there are different requisites, but it's the same Lord who appoints them all. Verse 6 says, And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. God works through different men in different ways. But it is the same God who achieves his purpose through them all, through us all. There are various gifts, administrations, and operations, but all come from one God, one Lord, and one Spirit. That is from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the spring and the origin of all spiritual blessings, all issue from the same fountain. It all comes from the same place. All have the same author. However different they may be in themselves, they all are from God. So we have no need to be envious of one another or either that think that I one gift is more important than the other gift. All of them comes from the same fountain, that's from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all of them have their purpose. It is the purpose that God has chosen has ordained for them. And so it is not our place to to uh, uh, raise up one gift above another. So so we see that they all came from the same fountain, the same origin, that they flow from God. We find in verse 7 of our lesson where it says that, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The, the manifestation is, of the Spirit is given. The Holy Spirit only makes his gift to each member so that he may use it for the common good of the body of Christ. No one has them merely for themselves, for their self-glorification, for their, for, their, for their ego. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts that God gives to his church, they are a trust. They are a trusted into the hands of men to what? To profit all, to profit the body of Christ. Spiritual gifts are bestowed that men may edify the church and promote and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the purpose of spiritual gift. Not not for our own enrichment, not for our own fi financial gains, but it is to edify, to strengthen the body, and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ so that someone 
might be saved. They are not given for show, but for service, not for pump and fashion and, and majesty, but for edification, not to magnify and lift up those who have them, but to edify and lift up others. That is the purpose that it is given that all may benefit from it. We find in verses 8 through 10 of our lesson where it states, For to warrant is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another by the same to, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretations of tongues. It says that one is given by the Spirit. There are several kinds of gifts that are here specified. It says to one was given the, the word of wisdom. That is a knowledge of the mysteries of the gospel and abilities to explain them and exact understanding of the designs and natures and doctrines of the Christian faith. That God places men within the body and he gives them the gift of the word of wisdom so that they might be able to uh, understand the mysteries of the gospel. Now we have to understand this that when we see the word mystery in scripture mystery simply means something that was previously concealed that is now revealed in scripture. So God places men and he gives them ability where that they might study and that they might be able to, to, to interpret and learn those things of the scriptures. And then that they will be able to share them and educate the body. It says to another, he gives the word of knowledge. That is the knowledge of mysteries wrapped up in the prophecies, the types, in the histories of the Old Testament. Someone who can who, who, who can understand that and then share his understanding with others. To another faith. That is the faith of miracles. A faith in the divine power and promises. Whereby they are enabled to trust God in any emergency and go on in the way of their duties and own and possess the truth of Christ, whatever the difficulty or the danger. Many uh, members of the body of Christ that they had to endure in innumerable hardships they had to endure hopeless situations where their life was on the line. But God gave them the faith to regardless of what the situation looked like that they held on. The apostle Paul was an example. He was beheaded for the gospel of Christ. All the, all the apostles, they was martyred. Stephen, he was stoned, but yet in, in the midst of those dangers that they did not give up hope, but they looked unto, looked unto the Lord with a steadfast eyes of faith and, and trusted in him regardless of the situation. Faith is a growing process. Faith is not something that where you just come into this faith life as a mature adult. It's just like our physical life. You are born as an infant and then through trials and tribulations we learn 
how to trust in God. To some he gave the gift of healing, the healing of the sick. To others the working of miracles, that is to do supernatural things, such as raising the dead, restoring uh, sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf and the lame walking. To another he gave the gift of prophecies, that is declaring the will of Christ Jesus, discerning of spirits, that is distinguishing between the false and true. To another, that diverse kinds of tongue, that is not unknown tongues or gibberish, but it is the, the ability to speak different language by inspiration. Then there's the interpretation of tongue. That is the ability to render foreign language readily and properly into their own language. On the day of Pentecost, when the, when the Peter preached that sermon, it said that, that there was people gathered in Jerusalem from all around the known world at that time, Jews. But when Peter preached that sermon, it said that those that was there, each one of them, though they were from different parts of the known world, but they heard Peter as he preached in their own language. And so, and so we see that God gives those gifts for the ability to build his church. But we find in verse 11 where it says, states, but all these workers that one and the self-same spirit dividing to every man servilely as he will. But all these workers that want in the self same spirit, that it is according to God's will, it is according to the, the will of the spirit, to each believer, to everyone believer, it is given a spiritual, we are given a spiritual gift. We are given an enablement by the Holy Spirit and the capacity for pacific service. No believer is destitute of a gift. If you do not know what your gift is, pray and seek the Lord's direction in what he would have you to know about the things he desired for you to do. But we are not but in the but in the dis uh, the the distribution the spirit acts in free sovereignty in the distribution of these gifts the spirit gives the gifts as he chooses to whom he chooses not because of what we think or how we feel or who we think should receive certain gifts or who who should have them and who should not have them and so now there is no room for self choosing and and Christian service, understand this, Christian service is simply the the ministry of such gift as we have received from God. Romans twelve and four states, For as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. So we need to remember that that there is diversity in the body of Christ. Just like our physical bodies, there are different members of the physical body. So there is diversity in the body of Christ. But even just like in our physical bodies, it should be unity in our diversity. For it's there for the same purpose, that is to strengthen to edify the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is, is to do what? It's, it is to glorify our Father in heaven. So the gifts are diverse, but they are equally honorable. We all are part of the same body. And then 
if we would think about it, <clears throat> we as individual members of this body of Christ, what do we have to glory about? If anybody glory, we need the glory in this is that we know the Lord and that and that He saved us, so He received all the glory. And so now we need to understand that the gifts that we have, that they are diverse, but they are all equally honorable because they are bestowed by the same spirit, administered under the same Lord, and energized by the same God. So let's remember that and that in unity, that the unity in our diversity is that in that unity is for us to be a light unto the world that that the world may know that we serve a risen savior may the lord bless you and keep you